Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rinse at a time. It is Thursday afternoon. It's my favorite day of the week. Yeah, it's my favorite day of the week. It's the three amigos. How are you guys doing? We'll go to Dion first. Howdy, Zuber. We're doing great. Ready for round three. And Matt, how are you? I'm still here, so I got to be having some level of fun. There you go. There you go. Uh, so what I want to talk about here is I think, uh, you know, on my channel, specifically the daily financial news, we've been talking about how I thought Q4 was going to be artificially goosed, and it was, but that we might come into Q1 and have a very low, if not negative GDP print. If in economics, a recession is called when you have two consecutive quarters with negative GDP growth. And I fear that we have one of those in our very near future. So I thought I would talk to both of you about a recession, what it might mean, because you both are old enough to have been through several, right? We can talk about it at the business level, right? You are both employees and business owners. We could talk about it from a real estate angle, rentals, whatever you want. But let's talk about a recession, because first and foremost, I can guarantee the audience this. We will have several more recessions in your lifetime. You could argue when they happen, but they will happen. So Dion, what's the recession like in the trucking industry? I don't know that I've ever understood what a recession was because until I made it to the age of 40 without ever having a thousand dollars in the bank mm -hmm. as a single parent with three kids, I always felt like I was struggling. So I don't care if it was a booming market, if the world was falling apart, the housing crash of 08, the dot com crash, I've never had any money to worry about. Mm -hmm. So I want to be really careful with how I say this because I don't want to be insensitive to the negative impact that a recession has to people. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons I like making content that helps people get on the property ladder and helps help you get to the point where you make work optional is because you're buying cash flowing assets. And when you own assets and you have cash flow from those assets, inflation is your friend. A recession, while somebody who's working and working very hard for the money that they make goes to the store and worries about the price of milk, I don't care. It, the recession, when you own cash flowing assets, if you've structured your portfolio right with good diversification of where the properties are, the property types, I diversify my tenant base. So they're from three different categories. I've done things to protect myself. I, I call it, I don't call it proof, but I call it recession resistant. Mm -hmm. That I'm actually, and I'm not, so I'm to careful how I say this. I'm looking forward to not suffering from a recession. Mm -hmm. by taking the last 10 years of action in a specific pattern mm -hmm. to be ready for one. Like my, my strategy is designed for a pandemic, a stock market crash, and you know a recession or a prolonged government shutdown. I've been planning for those. So there are things where I could have gotten better cash flow. I could have gotten better appreciation. I could have taken more risks to perform better. But instead, I took the amount of risks appropriate to the way I was able to diversify to be ready for what we're going to experience in the next year. Mm. Very well said. How about you, Matt? You and I have been through a couple of technology recessions where, you know, you're hiring people, then you're having to let them go. That's not fun. No, no. I remember looking at spreadsheets all the time going, well, I got to find seven names on this list. Mm -hmm. So uh, what do you think about recession in the technology space? Recession sucks. It's horror. It's, I mean, you know, it's br like multi-year contract stuff st mm. that starts coming due. Like, just get ready to hear it right? Like just grind, grind. Well, we're asking all of our vendors to take a 9% cut across the board. Sure. Why not? Yeah. I mean, I only make 7% profit. So why wouldn't I give you nine? Like that's the kind of thing that you're, that you have to emotionally prepare yourself for. I think yeah. the, this is why it's so important that these crisis videos so often on, on YouTube are stupid. Yeah, because Agreed. they actually weren't doing anything in 2008, except for taking another beer hit mm -hmm. you know playing beer pong right so that's what i find a lot of the younger guys on youtube are talking about and they don't know they have no clue they were completely insulated from it they were in college yeah. or they were in high school or they had just gotten out of college so they have no idea we lived through it we invested through it so the lessons that i learned from last time were don't be overcapitalized you, know, you can't be overcapitalized you need to have as much money as you possibly can have don't be over levered. Don't be heavy in margin other than what, you know, sent even, even questioning what banks will give you that created a lot of really good investors 
the guys that got sunk, some of them got even better than what they were. And they're like, yeah, I'm not going to get caught like that again. Mm -hmm. Other guys are going to learn exactly the same lesson. <clears throat> the other thing that I think we've also put a lot of time, effort and energy into is we know that when that uh, correction happens, we know that it's going to directly impact workers. Yeah. And so the thing that we want to do in being a good, properly run business and making sure that we dance with the one who brung us and that we help them in their time of need, we make sure that we have slate ready projects that we can put into play immediately. I literally have a page of projects that we will do if the market corrects 20%. And there's a bunch of workers out there, materials are, have, have corrected in price. Mm -hmm. I have a whole slate of projects that I will keep our main subs busy for months, yeah. months, if not a year, year plus between us and other customers that I know that they have. So they won't feel the pinch nearly as much, sort of. The mm -hmm. other thing that we will do as well is say, hey, listen, you raised your price a lot in the last five years my turn. Mm -hmm. And so I will put you to work, but it's not going to be at the same, you know, red retail price that you guys have been getting me for because you have 17 other people banging on your door. Right. You don't have 17 other people banging at your door. And so the economy, we will be there to help you and support you, but we recognize you're going to work with us just so you can stay busy and, and, and make money. Yeah. Great stuff there. The only things that I would add on top of that, because again, I suffered through the 80s recession as a teenager. It's one of the, my most painful memories, watching my mother not be able to pay bills, having to get a job as a teenager at a fast food joint. I mean, I, I have these scars or baggage or whatever you want to carry. Them. What I would tell you as an adult is first and foremost, your kids are watching, right? My parents didn't really get that. We were watching. Uh, I took it one way. My sister took it entirely different. We're thus different today. Uh, second, uh, first thing I would do is I would evaluate my job. Yes, I know the job market, 10 million jobs open, blah, blah, blah. All, if we have a recession coming, the job market will get darker quicker. Yeah. What I would do is I would, if you are a sales software sales rep, you love selling new products because you have the lowest quota, green field, you can share accounts, all of this stuff, except at the beginning of a recession. <laughs> because what will happen is they will slash R&D, they will slash marketing, and they will slash, they will, they, th that team that was selling that new product will disappear. So check yourself. Are you working on bread and butter products? Or are you that one off that's going to be the next generation thing that in a recession will go bye bye. So check yourself. Don't, don't get caught. Next, time to really audit needs and wants. Might be time to stop spending on wants just for a little while, just to see where this is going. And then finally, if you are ready, the best deals I've ever made were in a recession. You can get seller financing, creative deals. Again, the market in real estate is going to change and prices may not fall. That who cares? You just need one seller who has to sell and move to Texas for a job, and he wants out of California. $50,000 $50, savings because I can close tomorrow or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, be ready. A lot of people in a recession will retreat when you should actually be aggressive, but change your numbers. We talk about good and great all the time on this channel. If great for you is 8% today, in a recession, I want it to be 12. We're not going to do eights in a recession. We're going to do 12s. We're not doing sixes today. We're going to do 10s, whatever they are. Be aggressive, be greedy, but change your number. Um, you know, if that if we come to a recession, again, a recession, unemployment might go from three, nine to eight percent. That's horrible. That's a double. It still means 92% of the people are working. I it's say that all the time because people are like, oh, what if unemployment goes to 12%? So 88% 80. of people still have their jobs. Yeah. Well, I'll be just fine. Yeah. But to Dion's point and to your guys' point, this is one of the things that I've learned from you guys is diversification by portfolio. Mm -hmm. I had zero housing, you know, voucher program housing. I had none of that. I had no government assisted housing, none of it. Because the market, there was so much there that I never needed to take any of that. And then it was looking at what we went through in the pandemic. It was understanding what occurred. And we still only had two tenants that didn't pay. Mm -hmm. But I said, boy, it really would be nice if 
50% of my nut can be covered with 25% of my housing and it's guaranteed money. That's yeah. you, these guys are onto something. That's something I need to do to start to diversify, which we actually have. And so I think we're, I think we're at like 18% of our portfolio now is, is that's assisted. Awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So in the end folks, reset again, people hear me talk about a recession that I've been calling for one for a while. They think I'm doom and gloom. I, I'm a realist. I, yeah. I'm not a, you know, to the moon or diamond net <clears throat> nonsense. I'm like, Hey, I've been studying the consumer for a long time. I think they're about to retreat from the market. If they do, that will lead to a recession. And uh, I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited because, again, the hardest thing to do in real estate is find a motivated seller. They only show up in a recession. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited. Any closing thoughts, uh, Dion? We'll go to you first. Yeah, let me wrap up with the person I'm most concerned about is the person who relies on their income from their job. If, if you have one source of income and it is your <clears> W-2 <throat> job, we talk about making work optional. So we have income that comes from sources where we don't have to sell our life one hour at a time because in a recession, what does that person do when nobody's buying their life one hour at a time? Mm -hmm. You want multiple sources of income coming in. And that's why in the one rental at a time model, the thing that I really like is it's not, don't go buy a 60 unit apartment complex because that's in one area. And if that local market loses its economic drivers and you don't have tenants coming in, that's a huge impact. But what I like about having one rental at a time and duplexes, I like to spread mine out. I only, I only have seven properties, but they're more than 10 miles apart, close to Boeing, Amazon, a base, a port, a college, a hospital. It's like five or six massive changes would have to happen to impact my portfolio in a way that it actually hurt me. Because I think my balances are around the same. I, I think almost half of our tenants would have to stop paying rent for mm -hmm. us to have to figure out a way to pay the mortgages. <clears throat> Right. Pretty close to I mean, my, that's yeah. about where my average is. Yeah. Um, yep. And, and so I can't stress the importance of it in a booming market for the last several years. It's been like you should be getting on the property you know, ladder. This is really important. But when we see things happen where companies shut down or when a recession happens and the jobs go away, people should have and should be getting on the property ladder so that they have income that doesn't come from that W-2. Well said. Matt, any closing thoughts? Can't say it any better than that. I think that people need to be, you know, Mike, you and I have spent the last year. Dean, you got to do this, man. <laughs> Mike and I have spent the last year creating cash mm -hmm. <clears throat> with the anticipation that we know that when that first shoe drops, we're not going to be able to get that cash anymore. And you're, even if you pick up that phone and you call today to refinance an existing property, you are at least six weeks away. If you're not going and if you're not going non-QM, if you're going traditional routes, you're at least six weeks away, if not eight. <clears throat> lucky, you'll be lucky if you lock in a rate. You'll be lucky if they finish it by the time the rate lock is done. You'll be lucky if the appraiser at that point isn't even seeing some changes in the market where now your numbers are going to be adjusted. Mm -hmm. So the time to do it is when you don't need it. Mm -hmm. And I think largely that time has passed. I think there are a number of markets where it hasn't necessarily passed, but that's why you have to be a good business person and be able to, at least on some levels, anticipate because I'm going into this recession, better capitalized, better percentage cash flow than I ever have been. So this is something where even if we get hit with war over in Russia and all the craziness that's happening here, it's something that I, you know, I believe will be in a strong position to not only weather the storm, but be able to acquire from others that weren't positioned as well. Yeah. Dion, would you like to respond or just leave it there? I think that was a perfect summation. There you go. Well, folks, I got nothing better to say. Again, recessions are the time to make some money. Take care of your house first. Also yeah. remember your kids are watching. So if you want to stress about money, make sure they're out of the room because you don't want to have your kid, your son walk around the corner and see mom at the kitchen table weeping. That was not a good memory in my memory bank. So uh, folks, take care. Uh, the three amigos will be back next Thursday. Bye. Ciao. Thanks, Mike.